Fee, and I'm here for a pregnancy update. This is my 20 week pregnancy update. I'm actually doing one week this time, unlike the last couple of videos where I had to clump things together. I am actually doing this remotely, somewhat on time. This is week 20. Currently, I am 21 weeks in one day. And let me just put this out there. That's three weeks to viability, people. Three weeks. I am just completely amazed by that. Completely amazed, and the countdown is going. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. I have a countdown going. <laughs> all right, so, pretty exciting week this last week. We had the anatomy scan, I'll get to that in a minute. And other things, let me get into other things first. Not a lot has changed since my last update. It's only been one week. Um, most of the symptoms and whatnot that I mentioned in the last video are still kind of hanging around. Um, not too many, but all the stuff that I mentioned, like about the toothbrush and whatnot, yeah, all of that's still going on. <laughs> um, we do have a couple of new things, though. Um, first thing, first things first, the feet are officially swollen. Um, I have been drinking water like crazy, and I have a little stool underneath my desk at work. For those of you who aren't familiar, I'm a programmer, so I sit down a lot during the day. I try and make sure I get up every now and then and walk around. Um, but I also have a stool underneath my desk that I keep my feet propped up on and try and help with the swelling. It's not anything too worrisome. Um, like when, when you press on my feet, it doesn't pit. So it does bounce back, so that's a good thing. And for the most part, they're better in the morning. Like when I sleep at night, they seem to be better. Not always, not always, but it comes and goes. It comes and goes. The feet are definitely swollen. Uh, the only crazy part about that is those of you who have known me for a while or have possibly watched my past Vedas know I am a shoe girl. And when I say I'm a shoe girl, I easily have shoes that number into the triple digits. And I can count on one hand how many of them fit. <laughs> I actually have zero work summer shoes that will fit my feet. The only work shoes that I have that will fit my feet are, are winterish ones, closed toe, um, small wedges. So those work. Those work great. But the feet want to breathe, so I'm going to have to do something about that soon. Um, and I have flip-flops, which I cannot wear to work. That's about it. All of my other shoes, they just aren't working very well. What else? The other new thing, see this hand? This is my right hand, my dominant hand, and it likes falling asleep. <laughs> this started about, I want to say four days ago, actually. Um, it came on pretty quickly, which I thought was strange. Um, one day I got up and I was, you know, getting ready for work, and I go to put my mascara on with the little makeup I've been wearing lately. I go to put my mascara on, and the, all of my fingers and my thumb start going all tingly. By the time I got the mascara done on both eyes, I couldn't feel the fingers. <laughs> it came back quickly after I kind of shook it out and stopped holding on to the mascara and having my hand up here. Um, the next day, it started to happen a little bit more often. It happened with the mascara again. It um, happened with the razor and the shower. It's almost like anything that I have to hold on to causes this hand to fall asleep. Following day after that, same thing, razor, mascara, then it moved on to holding the, uh, the shower head. Uh, when I tried to crochet, holding on to the crochet needle, I got by about three rows in my pattern, I couldn't feel my hand. <laughs> so it is getting progressively worse, kind of quickly, actually. My chiropractor looked at it today, and he said, sometimes it just happens, sometimes it's hormonal, or sometimes there's just a little bit of extra pressure laying on the wrong nerve. So I know there were people that I watched when I was uh, originally, originally starting out on YouTube. Um, I believe it was Crystal that I watched when she was brewing up her two adorable twin boys. I think she got it in both hands. So I wasn't surprised. I was just kind of hoping that if it was going to do that, it was going to wait a little longer because I'm a programmer, so it makes life a little more difficult. But We'll see how this goes. There were a couple instances already that, you know, when I kind of held onto the mouse, it, it started to go tingly. I do have um, wrist protectors on my mouse pad and on my keyboard. I don't know what good that's going to do. So 
we will see. Hopefully it just, you know, goes to the tingly tinglies and, and, and it comes back when I stop doing whatever it is it doesn't like me doing. But like I said, it does seem to be progressing kind of quickly, um, happening more and more each day. So we'll see. We will see. Those are really the only two new symptoms. Um, the other stuff is just repeats from stuff that I've said in the past. So moving on, moving on, there were two exciting things that happened this week. First one was my 20-week appointment with my new OB. And as it turned out, my OB got sick. And they called me about three hours before I had to go in. I was supposed to go um, at night after work. And they said, she's not going to be here. <laughs> she is not feeling well. So they had to reschedule me for the following day. And uh, I ended up seeing a different doctor. Now, I knew this was eventually going to happen. There's uh, four doctors in this practice, two female and two male. My main doctor is female. And she had told me that later on when I get to like 32 weeks and I have to start going in every week, then uh, they would start cycling me through all four doctors just so that I got familiar with everybody and they got familiar with me. Well, we started it now. <laughs> we started it now, figured why not, um, because the appointment had to be rescheduled at the last minute. I will say the, the second doctor that I have now seen from this practice is just as nice as the first one. Um, so I, I'm pretty satisfied with that. So, so far, two out of four are good ones. Really, really liked them. Answered all the questions that I had. It was really nice. Didn't try and push me out of the room. Didn't try and, you know, speed up the appointment more than it needed to be. It was great. It really, really was good. So, so far, if I end up with either one of those two doctors when I deliver, I will be happy. So, we'll see about the other two. But I am having a really good feeling that um, all of them are probably pretty awesome. While I was there, I did mention the swollen feet, and they're really not worried because, let's see, in my first trimester, I'm not entirely positive how much weight I gained. It wasn't tracked too well by the IVF clinic. They figured, you know, you're on all those fertility meds, that's definitely going to affect things. Um, in my opinion, I think I might have gained like eight pounds, more than I wanted to. Um, I don't really recall changing anything about the way I was eating or anything so I, I'm just gonna chalk that up to the meds but now in my second trimester I have gained two pounds so far and they are happy with that they think that's good two pounds is definitely not showing any signs of water weight despite the swollen feet so they were happy with that um, my blood pressure is perfect and I'm not dropping any protein in my urine so they're not worried about the swollen feet. Just happens to some people. So, so hopefully all swollen things will just remain to the feet and the rest of my body will not get swollen and not end up with any worries for preeclampsia, at least not yet. We shall see. While I was there um, at that appointment, which was a handful of days before my gender scan, before my anatomy scan, they, uh, they didn't do any kind of in-office ultrasound at this particular appointment, but they did put the Doppler on me and they found the heartbeat right away, <laughs> right away. Um, I noticed that where they were finding the heartbeat with the Doppler um, was much higher and towards the center than where I was finding it with my home Doppler. I haven't tried that myself yet, um, but I did note it. I did note it. And the doctor saw me kind of looking where he had the Doppler. And he's like, listen, I just want you to know, just because I'm finding it in this particular spot, it might not be here in this particular spot five minutes from now. <laughs> he, he tried to remind me that, you know, baby is still small. Um, the anterior placenta and, of course, the padding that I already have. All of that makes it much more difficult. So, but I was, I was happy that they found the heartbeat right away. Um, the Doppler he was using did not give him a uh, beats per minute reading very well, again, probably because of everything that I just said. So he timed it manually and came up with still a heartbeat right around 160. So that's what happened at the 20-week appointment. But while I'm on the subject of heartbeats and anterior placentas and whatnot, movement, really not feeling a whole lot of movement still. 
I was really hoping I'd start to feel more of it by now. I am occasionally having episodes where I kind of feel like I might have felt something, but still not entirely positive. Same thing I was telling you guys last time. That really hasn't changed. There were a couple of times where it almost felt like a very short-lived cramp, like, I don't know, maybe baby Pope just the wrong spot. I I don't know. I don't know, but that that's about all I have with the movement. I will say it is happening more and more often that my husband will put his hand on my belly and swear up and down that he is feeling stuff and describing it to me and saying, hey, I felt it right here, right this spot right here, and I'm right on my hand, right in this part, and I won't feel anything. I won't feel anything on the inside, and I'm like... What is going on with that? I mean, is it even possible? Well, it just so happened I was watching a video from Daily Bumps, Missy Lanigan, um, and she had the same exact thing going on. And if I remember correctly, we're not that far apart. I mean, maybe half a week, week tops. But she was having that same exact thing, and she said she looked it up and um, found that that sort of thing where being able to feel it, having a different person be able to feel it from the outside and you can't feel it on the inside is common or it can happen with an interior placenta. So, of course, wanting to look it up myself, I did, found the same exact thing. So I find that very, very interesting that something moving around inside my body I can't necessarily feel, but someone putting their hand on my belly can feel it. That just seems crazy crazy but apparently it's definitely possible and it has definitely been happening when I told my husband that he was like see see I'm not crazy I told you I was feeling something and he probably was so that brings us to the anatomy scan the gender scan whatever you want to call it oh my god this was such an awesome experience first of all I was a big gigantic gooey mess a big big huge gigantic gooey mess that day <laughs> the smallest thing could have made me start tearing up and let me tell you, I did. Uh, we go in there, right? And, and, you know, I'm used to going for ultrasounds at hospitals for not so good reasons. And when you're going for those kind of ultrasounds, they send you to the regular ultrasound area. Never been in the um, maternal fetal ultrasound area. It looks way different, let me tell you. The rooms are nicer. There's a big, gigantic screen on the wall that you can watch everything that they're doing. Um, they point everything out to you. They tell you everything that they're doing. You know, when you go to other kinds of ultrasounds, they don't like telling you anything until the doctor looks at it. So I, it was just, it was just so different, and it was pleasantly different. So as I said, there was a gigantic screen on the wall. We could see everything that they were doing. Um, it really is amazing what you can see, and when you've got someone pointing out what it is that you're looking at, it's just. Wow. I mean, when they got to the heart, they started measuring the heart. You could see the four different sections of the heart, the pumps, and oh, it was just, it was amazing. It really was. Measuring the brain, measuring the kidneys, measuring the bones, the head, all of that. When they got done with all those measurements, they did tell us that based on all those measurements, that at that time, which was last Friday, baby was 11 ounces. So, I found that really interesting that they could tell that by the measurements. They did confirm the anterior placenta. That hasn't changed. Um, it does slightly move, but you know, once it's anterior, it kind of stays anterior. And wiggler. We definitely had a wiggler. <laughs> there was a couple of times where they were trying to get just a better view or better measurements inside the heart looking at valves and whatnot and this baby just would not sit still would not sit still um there was a point in the middle of the scan where it appeared that um the baby kind of took like a two minute nap which i guess is very common they told us that that most of the time in these scans they find that a lot of babies you know they'll sleep for two minutes they'll wiggle around for two minutes they'll sleep for two minutes so that did happen, and I think that helped them, but they still didn't get quite as clear as picture as they would like, more than likely because of the interior placenta and everything else. But despite all of that, they were happy with what they saw. They said they didn't see any problems. The baby looked perfect. They, um, they did recognize the fact that I have MTHFR, and they wanted to tell me right off the bat that Lately, they've been having a lot of people with MTHFR, even a double copy of MTHFR like I do. 
and people seem to be doing better with it. So I don't know if it's the care or the medicine. I'm not on blood thinners anymore for it, but I am still on the baby aspirin. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But they did recognize it, and they did say that they were going to put in their report that they would recommend me coming back for one or two more. Normally, I guess you only, unless something is going afoul, normally I guess you only get one more after this. I'm not sure. I wasn't clear on that. But they made it sound like they wanted to suggest a couple more than normal as long as the doctor would agree with it or the doctor thought that he or she agreed with the necessity just to make sure that growth continued on and that there wasn't a problem with any kind of clots or anything anywhere blocking growth which is what MTHFR can cause. Same thing with the folic acid. Um, they did verify that uh, they didn't see a cleft palate, didn't see any problems with the spine, didn't see anything that folic acid deficiency can cause. So that that was awesome. Um, so we'll we'll uh, we'll see. My next appointment with the doctor is at 24 weeks. I believe it's June 30th. So I suppose at that point I will find out whether or not they're going to send me for extra ultrasounds or not. Um, they really didn't seem worried. They just wanted to put the information out there. And, uh, you know, the, the cool part is the original ultrasound was done by a tech and just a regular ultrasound tech for a maternal fetal. And this girl was like an artist with some of the pictures that she was able to get and gave us, which, which I will insert in a minute. Um, but after she was done, then the doctor of that area in the hospital came in and double-checked everything. So it was kind of like getting a second ultrasound. It, it, it was really cool. It was very thorough. They showed us everything. It was just, it was amazing. So, gender. <laughs> gender. Most of you know what I'm going to say. We still don't know the gender, and that's by choice. They did see the gender. They did say that they were easily able to see the gender. Uh, the original tech um, said that she saw the gender while she was doing the other measurements and whatnot. She just didn't point it out to us. And that while she was going to do the gender portion of the scan, which we closed our eyes for, we did close it, we didn't peek, didn't see anything. Um, she said that at the time when she was actually looking for the gender and making sure everything was okay in that area, that the baby's legs were wide open. <laughs> so, um, originally, my husband was a little worried that maybe he was wrong. If, if, as you recall, um, Donnie has been saying since the beginning that he swears up and down it's a girl. But when he heard her say that she could tell what the, the, the sex of the baby was right away, he started to get a little worried, thinking, you know, maybe he was wrong. Because normally when they say that, <laughs> normally that means boy, for obvious reasons. Um, but when she did say that, the legs were pretty much wide open. In, in my opinion, I think it could go either way. Because that would certainly make it much easier to tell whether baby is a boy or a girl. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of people out there that say girls tend to kind of hide and boys are the ones that kind of have the legs wide open for the world to see what's going on. But um, like I said, this baby was moving. This baby was moving and wiggling. So I don't really, I'm not really going to read anything into that either. So, so the gender party is Sunday. She did put a uh, number of pictures. She said she was going to put a number of pictures into an envelope and write on there what it was, if it was a girl or a boy. And, uh, she was going to kind of draw on the picture so that we could tell what we were looking at. So that'll be interesting to see. <sighs> we got out of there. <laughs> we had the sealed envelope in our hands. We were both like, oh, really want to see this. Really want to see this. You know, let's get this out of our possession now before we're uh, tempted. And um, Donnie actually delivered it. Delivered it. Didn't look at it. And uh, my cake baker <laughs> posts on my Facebook wall that... Um, she was happy to keep the secret and that she wasn't going to um, hopefully not open up the envelope until it was time to start working on the cake. Um, I found out later, I actually found out today earlier that she lasted about 20 minutes and <laughs> she opened the envelope. So she's known this entire week. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. It is driving me crazy, but I know it'll be worth it. Um, a lot of people have said, oh my God, how can you do this? And... and you know, I saw someone do a gender party with a cake 
I don't know, two, three years ago, and I just thought it was the cutest thing, and I said right then and there, I said, you know, if this ever works, I really want to do one of those. So that is why I stuck with my guns and did this, <laughs> even though it's driving me crazy, and it is kind of a um, practice and self-torture, but <laughs> in the end, it'll be fun. So that's about it. That's about all I got for you guys. And um, even though this is only one week, I'm looking at my timer on my video, and Fee just doesn't know how to shut up. I just keep yapping and yapping and yapping, even though this was only one week. Uh, Friday, I am going to get a pack of information from one of the nurses at my OB's practice that's going to have all kinds of information about classes and Lamaze and Bradley method and all that kind of stuff so that we can decide what we want to do. Gender parties on Sunday. Um, I have not recorded a gender reveal video. If you recall, I said I wanted to try and do both a boy one and a girl one so that I'd have them edited and ready and I'd just be able to upload one right away so that you guys wouldn't have to wait. That is still my intention, but it's not done yet. So I got a lot of stuff to get done this week, including that. <laughs> so be looking for that. Hopefully Sunday night. Uh, worst case scenario, we'll go with Monday. But I am going to try my best to get that up Sunday night so that you guys get to know not too far after the people who went to my gender party. So that's it. That's it. I'm going to put my book down. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> And I will talk to you guys next week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. I love reading the comments. You guys know that. Keep them coming. They make me smile. And to the rest of you, your time is coming. I'm still praying. And I'm still hoping for all of you who are still trying. Um, any of you who are going into a cycle, going into an IUI, trying naturally, waiting for things to line up properly for the right time, it's coming. Your time is coming. Do not give up. Don't quit trying. Because <sighs> I almost quit. I almost quit. And if I would have, I would have never gotten here. So, don't stop trying. Talk to you guys later.